guys, welcome to my first video, um, my first proper video anyway. I did a little bit of a story in the uh, in the previous video which I, I didn't really think of putting on YouTube but I did and it got me thinking about starting a little bit of like a series and just opening up. Um, I said in my last video that I really want to share my heart and open up and I feel like God wants me to be a bit more vocal in my faith and a bit more vocal in in some of the things that I want to I want to share um so yeah I really am really am keen to get this started and I want to do it and I hope it encourages people I hope it helps people to understand more um and today I want to look at Jesus I want to look at firstly who he is like who is Jesus who is he what is it about this man that has caused so many people to believe in him over the past 2020 years you know what is it about this man that makes him stand out from anyone else i love um a quote by c.s lewis and he he was he was the man who wrote the chronicles of narnia he he was a christian and he was like a, a theologian and he had yeah just a really good grasp of 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 christianity and the gospel he wrote some amazing books and he used to say of Jesus that if Jesus was was real and if he was a man that existed and if what the things he said were true, um, he was either a madman, like an absolute madman, or he was the son of God. And there's no middle line, like ultimately all of us have to make a choice. Whether we realise it or not, we either have to decide whether Jesus was a madman, was a nutter, or whether some of the things that he was saying were true. And if Jesus did really die on a cross, and if Jesus did really rise from the dead, and if what he said is, is true, then it affects every single one of us. And I want to unpack that. I want to start with, with scripture, and I want to unpack what the gospel is all about. And, and what it means, because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding around it. And there's a lot of people that aren't really sure. And Jesus has become the story that we hear in, in England when we're younger, but we don't really understand what it's all about. The gospel doesn't begin with suffering. It doesn't even begin with sin. It doesn't begin with, with darkness. It begins in the beginning. And the story of scripture and the story of Christianity is that there was a beginning, that the world didn't just pop into existence like some people say, you know, it didn't just miraculously appear out of nothing one day and then all of, the, all of a sudden the earth and everything that was in it just, just appeared. Um, the Bible teaches that, that God was there in the beginning and that he created everything. Now, the first book of the Bible, Genesis, is a beautiful, beautiful poem, the first few chapters, about how God created the world. That he did it in seven days, and that on this seventh day he rested. And it's just this beautiful picture of, of, of God and, and how invested he is in, in his creation. And the pinnacle of his creation, the, the point where, you know, this was when it was his his utmost desire his absolute pleasurable plan was that he created humanity and he created adam and eve and and we all know the story but there's something really significant in what he did in creating adam and eve and this is where the gospel starts you see the gospel begins with god creating man in his own image and that's a really really powerful thing like god created humanity to look like him. He created us to share in his nature, to have relationship with him, to be to be one with him. You know, he put in the story, he literally creates Adam out of dust. And it's this beautiful picture of how God just breathes his life into Adam. And Adam comes alive because of the life that God has put in him. And the story progresses. And I'm kind of just doing an overview here, so I'm skipping a lot. But Adam and Eve are faced with a choice. You know, God never wanted robots. He didn't want people just to follow him, follow him blindly because they're programmed to do it. He wanted to, to have people that would, 
that would have relationship relationship with him in trust and in love and to have trust and love you need choice you need choice in any relationship and any really good relationships that, that is found uh, that is founded upon love has a has a strong element of trust so god places two trees in the garden and he says look you can eat from this tree this is the tree of life this is going to be good for you but you can't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that's not going to be good for you uh, and and adam and eve are faced with this choice and it gets to the point in the story where there's a snake that comes and the snake whispers to adam and eve god only knows that that if you eat from that tree you'll be like him which i think is so interesting you know the snake came and said that if they ate from the tree of the knowledge of the of good and evil that they would be like god but in the beginning god created them like him they were created in his image anyway the the serpent got adam and eve to to almost doubt their value to doubt who they were and to get them questioning about who they were as well and we know from the story that they gave into that temptation they ate from the wrong tree and sin came into the world and this was the first moment of sin it was never god's plan it was never his his heart he never wanted his his creation to to face the ramifications of sin but but once they sinned they literally gave up their identity they gave up who they were they chose to believe in a lie and and it brought sin into them so that they lost that image of God. They lost who they were and they became a product of sin. And ever since that day, the whole earth has suffered, literally suffered. And you don't need to go far to check out where it suffered. I just encourage you, just look at the news. You look at the news and you see the brokenness in this earth. And, and deep down, we all know it's not, it's not meant to be that way. You know, suffering, poverty, famine, all of that stuff was never meant to happen. But it came as a result of sin. Adam and Eve literally became sinners and all they could do was sin. It spread throughout all humanity. Literally, if you read the stories in the Bible, it was story after story of pain, of loss, of suffering. And, and the brokenness spread throughout the earth. It, it was like that for thousands and thousands of years. Um, but God in the beginning spoke and said that one day there would be a man to come who would bless the nations, that he would rid the world of evil and that he would bring salvation to all people. And this is where we get to Jesus. You see, Jesus came to the earth as a man. He came to the earth in human form and that's so powerful. The reason God didn't just from his heavenly throne sort it all out was because he wanted to do it in relationship with humanity which is what he did in the beginning. He created Adam and Eve. He gave them authority. He gave them dominion. He wanted them to, to rule over the earth, but they gave up that authority. They gave up that dominion. So God had a plan to restore it back to humanity through Jesus himself. And the story begins with him. And he comes to the earth and he's not corrupted by sin. He's born, and we all know the Christmas story, in a manger. He's born really in a humble way. Um, he's not, he doesn't come like a, a king on a, on a throne or a, or a general in an army. He comes as a, as a, as a Jewish man born in a, in a stable. It was probably dirty and, and disgusting, but he comes in humility. And it was almost hard to recognize him. Yeah, you think a saviour would come who would be, you know, if I imagine how I'd do it, I'd come out of the clouds and be like, I'm here to save you. But Jesus didn't do it that way. He came as a, as a baby and he lived a, a normal life. You know, we don't actually have any account of what Jesus did in the, his first 30 years. It was when he was 30 years old that he began his ministry and started to, to walk and, and live as the saviour. He, he was baptized and when he was baptized, he came up out of the water. And after that moment, um, without getting too much into it, he started walking in miracles and power and authority and no one had ever seen it before. 
you know, there's accounts of him healing the sick. There's accounts of him raising the dead. There's accounts of him um, feeding like 5,000 people with a few loaves and a couple of fish. But these miracles came because Jesus had a perfect relationship with God that no human being up until that moment had had because they lost it originally in the garden. And Jesus wanted to restore everything. That's why he came. He wanted to restore it back to the original plan that was in the beginning. And Jesus created us to be loved, to be holy and blameless. He created us to be filled with him. The story progresses um, and after three years of his ministry, Jesus goes to the cross. So Jesus has been healing the sick. He's been <laughs> loving people in so many different ways. And yet he goes to the cross. And, the, and, and there's these people called the Pharisees. And basically they were these super religious people of the time that, that hated Jesus because of who he, he hung out with, like the worst of the worst. He didn't hang out with the best people. You know, he didn't hang out with the people that had it all together. He hung out with the worst of the worst, with the prostitutes, with the tax collectors, with the sinners. You know, and he preached good news, good news of salvation, good news of hope, good news of healing. He said that a kingdom was going to come and it was going to spread to all men. And it was the kingdom of heaven. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? So Jesus goes to the cross. But why did he go to the cross? Why did this man, Jesus, have to suffer? A man who had never sinned before willingly chose to give his life for us to suffer our punishment and our, our, our death and our destruction. You know, when sin came into the earth, it affected every single human being. And we had no way of saving ourselves. We couldn't get ourselves out of it. But because Jesus was pure and perfect and holy, he was never contaminated with sin. He was completely spotless. And he chose to go to the cross willingly to give his life as a sacrifice for all humanity. That when we put our trust in him, we literally receive the life that he is. That we no longer become contaminated with sin. We become contaminated with God. We literally become a part of him again, just like it was in the beginning. Three days after Jesus died and his death was brutal. You know, we're not talking just like an easy death. A crucifixion was the worst death anyone could ever face. He had nails in his hands. He was beaten. The Bible says that he was beaten to the point of no description. Like you couldn't even recognize Jesus after he was beaten. He was whipped with a cord that had these pieces of bone and metal and glass in it that would dig into his back so deep and then ripped out. They wouldn't kill him, but they would bring him to an inch of death. And he had to carry his own cross up this hill called Golgotha, which was also known as the place of the skull. And on that hill, he suffered the worst death that was ever imaginable. But, but why? Why? Why go to those lengths? He then spent three days in the grave. And one of the results of sin in the beginning was that sin brought death into this earth. We were never created to die. Like every single human being has this understanding, whether you believe in it or not, has this understanding of eternity. We have this understanding that there is a an eternal thing. We think about space, for example, and you know that space just goes on forever. And we think about death and we think, what, what happens after death? What happens, you know? Because we know deep down that there's something more. There is something so much better than death and destruction and chaos. And that is eternal life. And Jesus, he, when he died, he kind of tricked death. Because he was pure and perfect and spotless, he did not deserve to die. And he rose from the dead on the third day. And this is where the powerful stuff happens. He rose from the dead in such a way that because he was human, he represented all of humanity. He was just like Adam's decision, plunged the whole world into darkness. Jesus' decision to suffer and die 
and, and, be, and be buried and then raised from the dead. He represented all of humanity because his blood and his perfection speaks on our behalf. So when Jesus rose from the dead, he has a gift, a gift to give all of humanity, every single person, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, no matter the mistakes you've made, no matter the decisions you've, you've chosen, no matter what, he offers you his life. And he is pure and he is holy and he is good. He's really good. And he is love. And he offers that life to you on a plate. Literally, here you go. Do you want it or not? You know, we can either choose to receive that by faith, which is what Christians are. They are people simply who have received Jesus' life. They're no better or worse than anyone else. They're just simply people that have said, yes, I want it. Or we can choose to reject it. We can choose to say, no, he it's a lie. Jesus never did that. You know, he, he was just a figment of people's imagination. He never existed. But we have to make a choice. We have to say yes or no. And ultimately, it comes to us. It comes to what we decide. That was kind of like a, an overview of of the gospel. And I've missed bits out and I've, I've spoken about certain bits, but I'm really hoping in the next few videos that I get to unpack this in a deeper way. I want to get into the Bible. I want to, I want to really dig in and really see what this means for us. Like, what does Jesus mean to us? Yeah, if you've liked this video, I really hope that you, uh, you can get something out of it. Please like it, please subscribe it and feel free to share it. I'd, I'd love to get it out there and, uh, and just see what, what difference it can make. <laughs> Thanks, guys.